Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Ace Academy. This is Blackjack. We're about to do some snooping into Nikki's room. She's got a man friend. What is this? There's a boy in Nikki's room. And they're behind closed doors. She got action before I did? That's bullshit. Not on my watch. I burst into her room. Oh, jeez. Okay, listen. You cannot burst into people's rooms. There is a new rule against doing that. Last time that happened, I got scared for pretty much life. Nikki's eyes widen and her mouth drops open. The boy twists to look at me from the chair beside the bed. Oh, this is awkward now, isn't it? There's a boy in your room! How dare you! You don't get this romance shit before I do! I haven't even picked yet! What are you doing? Who is this guy? Nikki leaves from the bed and tries to push me away, but I stay rooted to the ground. Is this Ken? I turn to the guy, ignoring Nikki, pulling on my arm. Are you Ken? He freezes like a deer in headlights and slammers, slammers out in that formation. Yes? Really? They, they gave him yen in the middle? Okay. Kokan? Leave him alone! We're just studying! Hmm, just studying, huh? Studying? Is that what the kids are calling it these days? Shut up, Fartford. You're like, aren't, aren't you supposed to be like 19 or something? Or 20? No, you can drink. You, you have to be like 20. Yes! What? No! Studying as in studying! She points to her bed. I take another look at the room, around the room. It's very pink. Nikki, you know what? I need a thumbnail. Nope. Oh, shit. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not what does it. it it's that. There, there we go. Perfect. Awesome. Get the mouse out of the way. All right. And thumbnail. That's perfect. It's just going to, you know what? I should just do like a zoom in on this motherfucker's face. <laughs> uh, anyway, As she points to her bed. I take another look around the room. Nikki's bed is sprawled with books, tablets, and laptops. Ken is holding on, uh, holding an open textbook in his lap. A look of pure terror on his face. I'm not fooled. I know underneath that good kit facade is there is just a demon just waiting to pounce on my cute little mo wow, really. You made that sound way worse than it needed to. Uh my cute little emoto. Ken is in my class and we have an exam next week. I glare at Ken who cowers from my stare. So now that you know nothing weird is happening, get out. That actually works a lot better than you can leave. I cross my arms. Actually, I think I'll stay and help you two study. All right, Fartfurter, listen. Don't don't be this guy. Don't be the fucking cockblock because your sister might have found a guy who's kind of interesting. Don't don't do this. I actually hate. What? I I do. You know what? New thumbnail. <laughs> oh God, this is good. This is this is this is good. That that right there. This worth worth holding this off an entire episode for. Um, but yeah, no. Un unless the guy is like a complete fucking douchebag, then yeah, be a little protective. But come on, you're being a fucking dick right now, Fartfurter. Don't don't be don't be that brother or father figure who's just like no man can ever enter your life or whatever. This is just, it's really weird and kind of creepy in a lot of ways. Whatever you're learning now, I already studied. Don't you have your own homework you can do? We're studying fine without you. Uh-huh. Are you sure about that? I think Ken here would appreciate the help. <laughs> I glare at Ken who gulps hard and nods. Actually, it would be an honor to have the help of an ace pilot. That stutter is really good. No, it wouldn't. I narrow my eyes at Ken very suspiciously. I got my eyes on you, boy. Don't try anything silly. Move him out of the room. <laughs> okay, look, I, I can't do that. Uh, don't try anything silly. I got, I got, I got my eyes on you, boy. <laughs> Fine. Does that mean you'll leave now? No. I never break eye contact with Ken. <laughs> I'm watching you. I'm watching you. I'm watching you. So whatever you're thinking, don't. Ken nods rapidly, clearly shaken. I won't. I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not thinking. I, I mean, not like that. <laughs> I'm not thinking. No, you're clearly not. 
I give him one final glare before walking out of the room. Nikki goes to close the door. Door open. She rolls her eyes. Fine, if that'll make you stop being crazy. Before I leave, I make the universal, I'm watching you, son. I'm, I'm watching you, boy. With my fingers, Ken's eyes widen even further. Well, that was a bit of fun. Luckily, my room is across from Nikki's. I leave my door wide open, too. While I try to work on my assignments, I'm too distracted to focus as I strain to hear what they're talking about. Every so often, I hear them repeat a math formula or compare answers or on equations. Nikki's definitely going to get me back for this one and interrupt one of my dates, isn't she? Well, then. Huh, I guess they really are studying. This time. Eventually, I give up and watch videos on MeTube. After about two hours, Ken goes home. Nikki slams the door shut to her room. She's pissed. Sheesh, what's her problem? Now that I can finally focus again, I finish up my assignments and easily fall asleep afterwards. That was definitely fun. Like, that was, that was, that was actually really... That was awesome. I wake up naturally for once and enjoy my chance to sleep in. Is this what it feels like to be rested? Why doesn't this happen every day? With a wide yawn, I pull my arms over my head to stretch and throw back my comforter and hop out of bed. My tablet flashes with a notification. I have an email. Curious, I open up the email and read it. It's Valerie. Hmm? Oh, it's from Dashu. Okay. They're hosting a promotional photo shoot and networking event tomorrow right before XZ's big concert. If XZ is supposed to be a, re a reference to something, I don't know what it is. Uh, all sponsored Dashu teams and individuals will be there, and right after the shoot, we are welcome to stay for the concert. Wait, Dashu sponsors XZ? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Dashu might be breaking into the world of Mecca, but they're definitely a huge name in sports and entertainment industry. Like one wrestling company that likes to say that they are sports entertainment, even though they've gotten to the point now where they are definitely sports entertainment and should just change their fucking name to World Sports Entertainment. Still, XZ is a supremely popular, uh, popular pop star. His shows get sold out within minutes. There's no way I'm passing up such an opportunity. I quickly type out a response confirming my attendance. I'm positive everyone else on the team will go as well, if only for the chance to meet XZ. Grabbing my clothes for the day, I get changed. As soon as I grab my phone, it rings, but immediately cuts out after the first ring. All right, who butt dialed me? That's weird. I glance at my missed calls. Kauri? It was Kauri. I bet she was gonna ask me about Dashu's event. I call her back, but she doesn't pick up. That's weird. Hmm. I shoot her a text. What's up? Then I go downstairs into the kitchen. Nobody's home again. Looks like I live alone. Opening the fridge, I spot a covered plate left for me. I unwrap the foil to find Oyakodon. 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 I don't know what that is, actually. Um, not a traditional breakfast, but delicious nonetheless. Nikki must have been practicing her recipes. As I dig in, I glance at my phone. Still no respects from, uh, response from Kaori. Huh. I'm starting to get a little concerned. She wouldn't call if she didn't have a good reason, so why isn't she responding? My heart drops as, uh, as my mind wanders to the worst possible scenarios. That always happens. She must be hurt and tried to call for help. Is she unconscious? Unconscious? There's no other reason she'd be acting this way. As the theories race in my mind, I take a deep breath to clear my head. I'm overreacting. It's probably nothing. What if it is something? Still, she'd most likely be at her dorm right now, and campus is not far away. I could double check to make sure everything's okay. I say we investigate. This Kauri is one of my three waifus at this point. Eh, I, I don't mean that to sound like a fucking weeaboo or anything like that. I know everybody's like, ooh, you fucking weeb. Eh, whatever. I don't care. It, it's, it's fun. You're just supposed to, like, enjoy and fucking relax games like that. Uh, sorry, and, like, just play into the game. It's fun. I need to do a few things on campus, so I'll just stop by while I'm there. No big deal, right? Also helped that I studied Japanese for three years, so I kind of uh, understand a bit of the language and culture, and then also the like the whole like American side of it, where it's just like oh, da, da. I grab my attendant uh, key. So blah, I cannot read. I grab my keys and head to Ace. After a short drive, I arrive at the, arrive at the academy. I recall the building Kaori led me to when she was not quite feeling herself. 
It's a nice way of saying drunk. I follow, as a, I follow a group of girls into the building and I'm about to join them at the elevator when a voice stops me. Excuse me, may I help you? This must be an all-girls uh, girls dorm. It's the front desk agent from the dorm. This is an all-girls dorm, so it makes sense that I get stopped. Um... No. Uh, I'm here to check up on my teammate. Hi, I'm on gear team ACE204911. I'm here to meet with my teammate. Of course. I just need to see your student ID. Perfect. Worked, worked, that worked perfectly. I provide the proper identification. Thanks. Just one moment. I fidget as her fingers dance across the keyboard. Can't she type faster? Hmm. Mrs. Tommy hasn't acknowledged the buzzer. Okay. Her phone died. We were chatting earlier. Oh, okay, that makes sense. You're all set then. All right, this is getting interesting now. She hands me a visitor's pass, because why wouldn't Kauri even respond to the buzzer? I mean, she... I mean, even if she did just butt dial me, you would at least be like, hey, sorry, didn't mean to call you or something like that. But she made an attempt to call me and then just hasn't said anything. I don't think she's here. She hands me a visitor's pass. Just swipe this on the elevator door, and it'll guide you to your floor. Room number 45. 45. There's nothing sexy about that one. Uh, that. Did you know it's better than 45? 46. Thanks. That was easy. I make my way to the elevators and swipe to activate them. Following the instructions, I easily find a room number 45 and knock on the door. No response. No answer. The door flies open. You! You! I want to take you to a gay bar! Oh, wow. That is the reference I make. Uh, let's start a war! Start a nuclear war! This is, this is why I'm so good at improv. Uh, Kauri blinks at me in surprise. Could you imagine if in the middle of an improv skit where someone just yells you at me, that's the first thing I say afterwards and they don't get the reference? What are you doing here? I don't, uh, well, I, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck happened. Uh, they call me Stalker Coon. <laughs> Your security here is rubbish. <laughs> oh, I kinda, I kinda wanna do this one. I really do. Fuck, I should've saved. Uh, they call me Stalker. <laughs> no, I was worried about you. You called me, didn't leave a message, then didn't reply when I texted and called you back. I thought something might be up. Like what? I don't know. Like something happened? I don't follow? My very serum's red. Does she seriously have no idea? This would be very awkward to explain. N never mind. I don't want to know what you're thinking. Her face is red too. I think she finally got it. A anyway. Why didn't you respond to any of my calls or messages? Are you okay? Oh wow, now this this comes off really, 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 really fucking insecure. I'm fine. Uh-huh. As she replies, I take out my phone number and call her number. I hear it ring faintly somewhere in her room. Your phone seems to be working fine. Why wouldn't it be? Okay. Well, you called me first, then you ignored any of my attempts to call you back. Why would you ignore me unless your phone wasn't working? You think too much into things. That might be true, but again, you don't just randomly call someone. Why did you call me? I think I deserve to know, especially after I came all this way. God, I'm just gonna go after Valerie at this point. Jesus. She crosses her arm and frowns. I didn't ask you to come over here. No, you didn't. You're absolutely right. I shouldn't have came over. I should have just stayed home and just made it be whatever, and you could have just called me back. You're absolutely right. But again, what the fuck? I'm about to retort when my stomach gurgles. What was that? Oh, so now you want to know things uh, things that my things make. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh-oh, that would be my breakfast, not a green... Oh my god, I'm gonna shit in her bathroom, man, aren't I? That's that's about to be what's about to happen, isn't it? Um... I need to use your bathroom. No way! You're not getting in my room! She is really protective about this whole room thing. She tries to close the door at me, but I stop with a foot. Seriously, this is an emergency. Trust me, I won't be able to make it home in time. I won't be able to make it home in time. Th that's not my problem. It is now. Poopies. Hey, what is it this time? Uh-oh. 
I turn towards the voice behind me. A girl wearing shorts and a tank top stands in the hallway, her hands on her hips. She freezes when she sees me and her mouth drops in horror. This isn't good. I'm sure all she's seeing is a strange man trying to force her way into Kaori's room. Uh, this isn't what it looks like? Um, quite a reaction to just. Kari lets go of the door and I crash onto the floor. Wait, Himeki. It's okay. He's one of my piloting teammates. That works. Thanks, Kari. Really? Yes, really. Please don't, don't, don't do the thing that you're about to do. Himeki glares at me. He looks like a pervert to me. I might be, but still, teammate. Thanks for that. I rub my head as I slowly get back up. Oh, your room looks very normal. And also, just, is it just a bedroom? Where's, where's like the, the living? Well, I guess if it's a dorm, this is actually all you would have. So th this is normal. I, I've gotten so out of living in a dorm that now I think like, oh no, everything comes with a living room. It's okay. He's just picking something up. Uh, more like putting something down. Poopies. More like dropping something off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you say so. But I'll be here in case he tries something. Nothing is going to happen. Yet. Kauri smiles. Thanks, but he wouldn't dare. Mostly because she'd probably beat the shit out of me. Himeki glares at me one last time before she goes back into her room. Kauri returns, her, uh, returns to her room and closes the door behind us. Clearly irritated by what happened, she quickly points towards the bathroom. Congratulations, you made it in. Now do your thing and leave. I'm not talking to you. I mean, listen, there's Sundere, and then there's just being fucking rude. Okay, thanks. I'll be quick. I head towards the bathroom. Poopies! I shut the door behind me and get comfortable on the porcelain throne. Do 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 do, taking a brown to the Super Bowl. That's a joke because that'll never happen. Her bathroom is pristine clean. It won't be anymore. Her items on the sink are neatly lined up. It won't be anymore. And there are no stray items that shouldn't be here. Won't be anymore. Uh, Alright, time to get out of here. I reach for the toilet paper and pull off the last sheet. Oh, no. She must uh, have some in the cabinet. I open it up. I can't find any extra rolls. The rest of the drawers yield the same result. Oh, boy. This is weird. Kari. No answer. Kari. Still no answer. Is she seriously doing this right now? Uh, Kauri! <laughs> Third time's the charm? Kauri! Guess not. I, I need toilet paper! <laughs> Fine, I'll just use something else. No, do not do that. You don't have any more toilet paper. Check the cabinet under the sink. Oh, now you, now, now you can talk. You don't think that's the first place I'd get, check given my predicament? Ugh, give me a minute. <laughs> this is going to get really interesting. Why is she so moody? It's not my fault she has no toilet paper. Kauri opens what I assume is a closet door and a few seconds later knocks on the bathroom door. I open the door just a crack and Kauri thrusts her hand in. I grab the coveted roll of toilet paper and she disappears. I'm saved. After washing my hands, I exit the bathroom. Kauri sits on her bed, her phone in hand. Thanks. She shrugs, her eyes glued to her phone. Sure. What if she meant to call someone else and accidentally called me and then was embarrassed by the fact that she meant to try to talk to me? She's seeing someone else. So, that's it then. Huh? You won't tell me why you called? It's nothing. I sigh. Alright, I can tell I'm clearly not needed here. Sorry to bother you. My hand is on the door when Kauri stops me. Oh. Wait. Okay. I pause, she puts down her phone. Can I ask you something? Sure, shoot your shot. Sure. Um. Ugh. She goes quiet and stares at her lap. Did she change her mind? I've been looking at different exchange programs and postgraduate opportunities in North America. More specifically, in the States. Oh. That's, that's, that's why you called? I was just curious about how things are over there. Maybe it'd be worth exploring those options? I'm 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 really confused. Why why what 
that's that's why you called that's that's why you did this whole fucking song and dance that that can't be it it's all the same globalization is too prevalent uh japan is better for the gear industry new adventures See, I would like to say new adventures because you're going to a different country. However, given what they were talking about with, like, the gear stuff and all of that, what if Kaori doesn't want to be a pilot anymore? If you're strictly thinking about your career growth, I believe Japan has better opportunities. Really? Yeah, they're still the leaders in Sino Robotics research and technology advancements. Many American pilots come to Japan searching for better opportunities, actually. Oh, okay. Thanks for your input. That seriously can't be it. No problem. Was that everything? Yeah. Sorry. That's why I called earlier. But it seemed like such a trivial thing that I didn't really want to bother you with it. I've heard of girls overthinking things, but Jesus Christ, that really? This isn't trivial at all. Besides, if there's something on your mind, I'm happy to listen. That's the whole point of being friends. Okay. She smiles. She seems a lot more relaxed now. You're all set, then. Yep. Thanks again. No problem. See you later. See you. That was a lot of nothing. Uh, I'll say it's still... Well, actually, no. I shit in her toilet. Oh, boy. She's gonna have to deal with that. Oh, don't forget to spray the Febreze in there. My poopies are really bad. It's still bright out, and I don't feel like going home to an empty house. I decided to go to the arcade and practice simulation matches. Talking uh, talking about our future as pilots, it only briefly has put me in a productive mood. Once it starts to get dark, I head home. I arrive home expecting an empty house. Instead, Nikki is lounging on the couch watching TV. Is someone else here watching and lounging with her? Hey, Nikki. This won't be awkward. She cranes her neck to look at me, but doesn't move from her spot. You're home. Oh, you're actually happy. Did Uncle Kaito come back yet? Yeah, but then he left again. He said he had to meet someone, then he tried to sneak out when I wasn't paying attention. But I was paying attention, and I saw him go. Also, looking at those clothes, you went on a date. Tell me about it. It was kind of weird, like he thought he'd be in trouble if I caught him. Hmm, I don't, I don't know. He's a weirdo. Hmm, Uncle Kaito trying to keep a secret from Nikki. Could he be going to see Aunt Yuki? Well, if he hasn't talked to Nikki about it yet, I won't mention it either. So how was your day at the cafe? Nikki groans and slinks further into the couch. Oh my god, I think my arms are gonna pull off. They had me washing dishes, and while I'm so happy that Uncle Kaito's restaurant is booming, if I have to wash another plate again today, I will scream. That great, huh? So what does that mean for dinner tonight? You finally adulted. <laughs> it's my sister, I, I can get away with this. Congratulations, you now know what to look forward to for the rest of your life. Nikki groans again. Stop! But at least you at least when you're older you'll get paid. So, you going back tomorrow then? She shakes her head. Nope. So you've quit already? No, silly. I'm just not scheduled to work tomorrow. Ah. Today was exhausting, but it was still cool to be in the kitchen. And I was only on dish duty because I'm new. I know it won't be long before I'm prepping meals with the rest of the chefs. Uh-huh. Keep thinking that. What are you gonna do instead? I'll watch XZ's concert on TV. All oh, right, yeah, XZ. She sighs wistfully. Oh my God, are they gonna put an option where, oh, you have a ticket and you can give it to someone and Nikki's an option and I'm a complete asshole if I don't give it to her and she hates me forever? I really wanna know how much, like, cause I know obviously Nikki's not a dating option, but like how much neglecting her actually affects the overall game. You know what I mean? It's just something I just thought about. I bet he's even dreamier in person. Yep, that's what that line means. I'm gonna get a concert ticket and I have to decide who I'm gonna give it to. I'll let you know if that's true. Nikki gives me a skeptical look. Oh shit, don't, oh, oh damn it, why did you say that? Did you just say what I think you said? If you thought I said I'm going to be at the concert, then yes. She stares at me, then snorts. Yeah, right. Those tickets were sold out as soon as they went on sale. So, funny story about that. I didn't say I had a ticket. I said I'm going to the concert. How would you be able to get in without a ticket? Uh, I don't know. Fart Furter is, like, worldwide, baby. I'm the best fucking pilot in the entire Ace Academy. So, yeah, your boy gets the hookup. When you're a pilot, you make all sorts of connections. Like the ones who sponsor your team in this concert. Wait. Dashu is sponsoring this concert? Yes. 
Nikki's mouth drops open and her eyes grow wide with hope. You're going to the concert? She hopes, she hops. She, I tried to correct myself and I corrected myself a line too early. I meant to mock the fact that I said hopes. She hops over the couch and grabs my arm. Please tell me you can bring your adorable and totally deserving little sister. I don't know, actually. Uh, no peace, all mine. Um, it probably won't be that great anyway. Sorry, but it's all business. Uh, nope, he's all mine. <laughs> nope, but maybe when I meet him, I'll tell him you're kind of a fan. Her voice turns into a high squeal. You have backstage passes? Even better, Dashi was holding a promotional event before the concert, which we all have to attend, and I'll see him there. Maybe we'll even take a picture together. Are you sure you can't bring a plus one? If I did, it probably wouldn't be you. Oh, that's just mean. I don't need to. I don't need my crazy fangirl sister there to embarrass me. I'm trying to gain points, not lose them. I'll be on my best behavior. Uh huh. Nope. Her shoulders slump in defeat, and tears gather in her eyes. Oh, okay. Oh wow, you just made the sound my stomach makes. Um. She sniffles between words. Y you go. Have fun. I'll just be here, wishing. I could go. Don't you do this to me. Nikki's last worm tr transforms into a wail of despair. Whoa, hey, wait, don't cry. She hides her face. Look, I'm sorry I can't take you, but I'll get you an autograph, okay? She perks up. Her eyes are suspiciously dry. You promise? I promise I'm not getting an autograph. I guarantee you, somehow I do not get this autograph. And I'll make it out to Nikki? Fine. Probably? Good enough. <laughs> okay. She throws her arms around my neck and pulls me into a hug. Thank you, big bro. That'd be an amazing present. I know, wouldn't it? I mean, a more amazing present would be taking me or getting me tickets to the show, but this is a solid second. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're crushing me. She lets go, then sinks back into the couch. Anyway, you should probably order dinner now. What do you mean, I should order dinner? Aren't you cooking dinner? If you want to go to a concert, I think maybe you should make me a nice, delicioso dinner. Why? I'm hungry, and I'm not cooking. Fine, I'll order a pizza. My stomach growls in response. I guess I'm hungry too. I go check out the takeout menus. After a delicious dinner, I head up to my room and do a little bit more research on Dashu and their other sponsees. Sponsees? That's a word? It's likely that I'll end up taking talking to some of them, and I don't want to seem ignorant. Once I'm done, I go to bed and drift to sleep. And that's where we should end this episode. I don't think I want to end this batch. I'm on a really good stretch right now, and it's like still early this morning. So, we'll go ahead and end the episode here. This is Blackjack. If you enjoyed the episode you seen today, go ahead and leave a like on the video. Uh, tell me what you think about Nikki and this whole concert thing, and then Kaori's complete overreaction. And uh, if you're brand new to the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe down below. I will see you next time. Goodbye and good night.